It's Brand Talk, where insights meet innovation in the world of marketing. Today, we're thrilled to host Mr. Shashi Kumar, co-founder and CEO, Akshay Kalpa Organic, a brand that offers antibiotic and additive free milk products with the emphasis on transparency, sustainable farming, and fostering consumer trust. Welcome, Mr. Kumar. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Ritika. Having me in the show. Thank you. So, I mean, I would like to begin with your entrepreneurial journey. It's been a ride. So, how has the journey been with you, Shai Kalpa? So, Ritika, this is last 14 years of our existence. We started in 2010. Mm-hmm. And 27 people from IT industry, all of them for Wipro. So, seed funded Akshay Kalpa in 2010. Okay. Uh, so, technically, it's a crowd funded initiative where we wanted to go and um, work with farmers in rural areas. So, that's the entire motivation behind these 27 people from technology industry coming and funding Akshay Kalpa. But yes, last 14 years has been up and down like any entrepreneurial journey. Okay, um, I think thankfully we have got a great support from our consumer base and also a lot of farmer uh, uh, loyalty. So it has helped us to really scale the business in the last uh, four to five years. But in, in all in all, uh, if I look back, I think it's an amazing journey and we are trying to solve some fundamental problems, especially right. on the farming side and uh, consumers have supported all heartedly. Right, right. And uh, Mr. Kumar, in your estimate, what would be the overall size of the Indian organic market? And at what rate would you say is it growing? See, there are a lot of numbers. Honestly, I would not know what is the size of an organic market. Okay, <laughs> but uh, okay, from a category point of view, okay, organic as a category. Mm-hmm. So it is, it is growing substantially around uh, 25% to 30% CAGR it is growing year on year okay that category growth is okay it's been substantial Mm -hmm. okay um but the challenge okay would remain okay in terms of um, will we be able to scale up our production systems to meet okay the demand okay that's what i will i believe okay is going to be a limiting factor so the trade can only blossom if uh, there's a production happening organic production happening that's right. where the farming system have to care up. So that is one limitation. Mm-hmm. And the growth is quite decent. I think it will continue to be robust for the next 10 to 15 years, in my opinion. Right. Right. And uh, what would be the size of the market that you operate in? See, right now, so we are the biggest organic milk uh, producer in the country, okay, handling around 100,000 liters of milk every day. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, we do around okay uh, 300 crores uh, per year sales okay mm-hmm. and i believe our category is okay 10 percent of overall milk sales okay now you can imagine the how yeah. big that category is okay we are the biggest milk yeah. producer in the country yeah. milk producer in the world okay now the 10 percent of overall our milk industry is our category yeah. so therefore it's a huge category and uh, if you take bangalore Okay, Bangalore does around 50,000 liters of liquid milk uh, every day. Right. So you can imagine 10% of that market is our uh, TG in Bangalore. is right. around okay, 5 lakh liters of milk per day. Right. So, uh, so in, and also very similarly in uh, other cities where we operate, Chennai and Hyderabad, we believe 10% of that milk market is our TG. So right. therefore, it's good uh, market exists. But mm-hmm. it requires a lot of hard work in terms of production systems. Right, right. But with milk, I mean, uh, it's a highly competitive category. And it's not just from, say, players like uh, Amul or Nestle, but also regional players like a Nandini or a Avin. And uh, also, pub, I mean, private players, Hudson is there, Milky Mist is there. So then, and also on the digital side, in fact, there's Pride of Cows, there's Country Delight. So, what is the USP and the differentiator for your brand? See, uh, the fundamental way the milk is produced in the country is, is a big challenge. So, the way the milk is produced at a farm level, at what cost it was produced, what are the quality aspects, does the producer really make money? 
okay right. what is his family status what is the soil conditions at which the fodder is produced none of it is addressed right now in the country with respect of their plants okay uh, including from amul to kmf to okay avin to private players everybody mm-hmm. they just operate on a collection model including country delight operates in a collection model right. we go to a village work with an agent set up okay collection center collect the milk and provide a very good marketing uh, okay avenue that's what they have done they have done an excellent job there no doubt about that mm-hmm. but the fundamental mm-hmm. problem with the milk production in the country is at the farm level okay mm-hmm. are the cows fed properly is farmer making money mm-hmm. when you inject a antibiotic to the cow what happens to that antibiotic 60% of it comes out in milk mm-hmm. okay or what happens to aflatoxin management at the farm level Right. Where the feed and fodder is coming from, okay? These are the fundamentals Akshay Kalpa is trying to address. So the, in that sense, we are very, very unique in the country where we are going deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper on the farming side. For example, Akshay Kalpa produces 100,000 liters of milk from 1,200 farms. Right. To produce a very similar milk, okay, you would need 80,000 farms, 80,000 farmers. So wow. in a Amul model or a KMF model or a Kandi Delight model, or right. whichever model you want to do. Right. So that is the deep we have gone. Once we have gone deep there, we are okay. able to control various aspects of the milk, be it antibiotic residues, okay, aflatoxins in the milk. We are right. able to control the source. Okay, that's the differentiator Akshay Kalpa brings onto the table. Nobody right. in the country is able to do, but it's a 14 years of hard work. Right. So that's exactly how we differentiate Okay, from okay other milk producers or other milk marketers, okay in the country. I mean that's really amazing what you've talked about, and we've just closed the financial year. So how has the growth been for Akshay Kalpa this year, and what categories have driven growth for you this year? See, the milk continues to be very very robust category for us. Milk as a category grows sixty percent in our yeah. sales, but overall as a company we have grown around. 45% growth we have seen from previous year to this year this year we are closing with a close to 300 crores in sales okay right. so this is substantial growth for us uh, from what we were right. so coming financially also we we foresee that growth will be around 40 to 50% growth right. we can do that that's really commendable 45% is no joke so congratulations yeah. on that one yeah. uh, from fresh milk and dairy products you've also ventured into bread honey oil and juices also eggs and fruits so what has prompted this move and uh, what percent of revenue now comes in from non dairy products versus dairy for akshay kalpa in the non dairy initiatives what we have started okay it comes from the fundamental interventions what we are doing in the farm level the mm-hmm. farm which is producing okay milk is also producing honey It's also mm-hmm. producing greens and vegetables. Right. It's also producing tender coconut. Okay. Right. It's also producing a little bit of mushrooms. It's also doing a little bit of a backyard poultry. So it's right. also doing a little bit of okay greens and vegetables. So this right. is exactly how the gamut of things have opened up in the same farm. So right. that's what okay we have started giving market access to farmers. Mm-hmm. So that's how we have we have launched a lot of products. For example, batter we did because. We got a lot of ragi production happening. Ragi water, okay, we did. Ragi is a millet. It's a major millet, okay. So we are done a little bit of on that, okay. And we'll continue to innovate on that aspect. But right. the fundamentally, the way we will operate is what is coming from the farm, okay. Right. We will continue to give access to market, but right. we will never get into trade. For example, I will not go to open market and buy, okay, millets to give mm-hmm. access to, okay, market millets. No, we have to produce in our farms. in our mm-hmm. specification and our traceability systems okay yeah. for millet production to happen it's the most indian thing i would say to you know make the most of what you have from the farm right yes i think uh, the farms have been extremely productive i think we have been able to diversify the farms okay um, and the diversification is resulting in better revenues for the farmers mm-hmm. so the sector they how we would like to build the akshay kalpa journey right and uh, uh, What are your biggest markets uh, in the south, and uh, uh, your potential target markets as you as you plan to you know expand your market presence? So currently, our biggest market is Bangalore. 
and uh, chennai and hyderabad these are the three markets we are focusing right okay of course uh, in uh, some uh, cities like mumbai and pune and ncr we have got some e-commerce channels opened up but right. they are not big markets for us uh, right now it's a more of a brand building exercise mm-hmm. okay but bangalore generates uh, around 85% of our revenues remaining 15% of revenues do come from okay uh, hyderabad and chennai so bangalore is the key market for you yes yes so at akshay kalpa i mean he started by saying you know it's a sustainable offering so how is this positioning sort of uh, helping you build brand salience and does being sustainable mean you fall in the mass premium or the premium category see the sustainability articulation it's more of a back end articulation in the sense what does sustainability mean to farming and agriculture right. so that's how we are trying to articulate it's not a front end articulation right. not many consumers understand what is sustainable okay so when you do a go to a back end okay and see if they can farmer generate that revenue month on month mm-hmm. can the produce can come month on month day right. by day so that's where it is very very important that's how we are trying to articulate the sustainability piece okay in akshay kalpa Right. to make farm make consumers aware what farmer is doing okay we run a very big farm visit program for example last financial year we bought 13000 consumers of akshay kalpa to visit our farmers spend time with them understand what is sustainability means the right. consumer angle right okay if the farm is not sustainable consumer gets a bad product okay it's in consumer interest to ensure that he understands the sustainability aspects of building okay brand so uh, sustainability need not be a, let me say a statement okay it has to be really uh, consumers need to feel for it if right. it is not sustainable food is not good right. okay that that fundamentally needs to be very very clear so that message we are able to put it across to consumers when they go on stay in farmers with farmers spend time with them okay okay uh coming to your marketing what is the core of your marketing philosophy and uh, besides driving experience what are your lead metrics see the marketing has been uh, okay uh, uh, structurally different from how others are marketing okay so what the fundamental philosophy what is driving this one is do consumers understand what is good food Okay. okay that's where the fundamental question we have started asking okay it right. is not about the growth it's about consumer perception of good food okay how do you break that mold for example how many of us read labels mm-hmm. when you read a label no what we see we see mrp or expiry date beyond that none of us read labels yeah. okay what goes into the product how much okay preservatives are there how many emulsifiers are there okay what is added colors in there so mm-hmm. all those aspects no consumers never focus so right. what we have bought in is we have bought in consumer focus in terms of labels for okay. example we have clearly marketing saying that we will never ever do a product which is sugar added okay mm-hmm. so akshay kalpa is not done any product is added sugar okay. so that's exactly how the marketing okay angle of what we are trying to do the second aspect as i mentioned earlier Mm-hmm. consumers need to make an attempt to understand what is good for them okay in this journey they need help okay we encourage actively okay that ask questions where did the food come from right which soil it was produced is right. it safe for me what is the chemical load in the food hmm. okay aflatoxin load in the food what is the antibiotic load we want them to really question these aspects in the food this exactly been core of our marketing philosophy very open and transparent and able to market saying that you have right to ask these questions as a brand we are responsible to answer these questions for you so in the process what we are trying to say is it doesn't matter which brand you buy from hmm. go and make that brand accountable for what they are selling right so that's that's been the core of our uh, discussions so goodness inside basically yes right so looking ahead what are your plans for growth and expansion and what is the growth that you are expecting going ahead see right now we do two production clusters one is tiptur it's around 1200 farms 
and our second production cluster is in Chengalpattu, okay, okay. district of Tamil Nadu, that we started around four years back. Okay. We are already start. We are starting the procurement, okay, maybe April, May time frame, okay. okay. So we want to focus next three to four years to build these, strengthen these clusters. Okay. Parallelly, we want to commission one more cluster around Hyderabad in Rangareddy district, okay, uh, most probably. Okay, or uh, in and around, okay, uh, Shadnagar. So that's what we are thinking. But, okay, uh, from a market point of view, we would like to stay focused for three cities next four to five years. Okay, okay Bangalore, Chennai, and Hyderabad build these markets substantially. Right, right. Uh, you, you spoke about your centers, right? I am sure they play a very important role in your distribution strategy. So, could you also talk about how distribution plays out to you? Yeah, right now, if you really take uh, Bangalore as an example, probably we are the only company in, in, in Bangalore distribution systems. We have set up 40 cold stores throughout Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Okay, our products actually go and stay in that cold stores by midnight. And early morning, the distribution happens. Okay. So, and second part is the channels at which we are through, through which we are distributing. Mm -hmm. So, one of the channels has been direct channel. A lot of consumers order through our app. Okay, right. we differ in the early morning. It's a pre ordered system. 50% okay. of our sales, okay, approximately 15 crores every month. We, mm -hmm. we, can, we try sales through our direct channel, okay. And the second cha biggest channel is e commerce, big right. baskets of the world, okay, Zepto, Swiggies of the right. world, okay. Right. That's where we are generating around 30% of the revenues. Around 10% right. to 15% comes from uh, the retail. So that's how the distribution, okay, by channel is finding out. But infrastructure-wise, every city we have dotted with a lot of cold stores. It is 300, 400 square feet cold stores where okay. we can actually deliver freshest possible, okay, produce to consumers. That's what we have enabled with. Right, right. Uh, anything else that you'd like to add, Mr. Kumar, building a brand organically? Uh, I mean, organically in the true sense, from the basics of uh, agriculture to, I mean, sustainably building a brand. So, anything else you'd like to add on that front? So at least in agri space, the brand building, uh, in my opinion, we will not be able to build a, a credible brand if we don't solve unit economics of production systems. Mm -hmm. So, the production system is farming. So, there the unit economics for the farmer needs to add up. Okay. Right. I believe that's a fundamental step. Second step is, how do we make consumers understand, okay, what is the unit economics of a farmer? Right. So the way I really look at a brand building exercise is for agri companies is, you know, the value creation for any produce happens in the farm, by the mm -hmm. created by the farmer. Value realization actually happens in the market when there's a credible okay consumer to pay for it. Right. Okay, when we bring these two together, we can build a wonderful okay brand okay uh, synergies on the okay. farm side and the market side both of them coming together and able to build a a, a credible okay uh, uh, value driven okay farmer need to make unit economics work and consumers have a clear value on hand of good food okay access to good food so that's what my take on okay the entire uh, um, uh, brand building uh, piece um, Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Kumar, for doing this today. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Ritika. I think uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity. Thank you, and uh, I hope to see you in Chennai sometime when, you, when I'm around. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.